If you're still sending your clients their photos with Dropbox or Google Drive, you need to stop right now and watch this video. Today, we're sharing our exact system for how we export our photos from Adobe Lightroom and how we deliver our images to our clients in a way that feels more like an experience and not just a transaction. But before we jump into that, we want to introduce ourselves. I'm Hunter. And I'm Sarah. And we're Hunter and Sarah Photography, a husband and wife professional wedding photography team. We're also educators, and our goal is to help photographers build strong foundations in both their businesses and their personal lives so that they can run profitable and sustainable photography businesses. So today we're finishing up our post-production secrets video series by discussing our export, gallery delivery, and final backup systems for weddings and for portrait sessions. And if you've just discovered us or this series, you'll notice pretty quickly that it feels like you're missing something. That's because this is the final video in a six part video series. So be sure to go back and check out the rest of the series for our full backup, sorting, calling, and editing workflow. So speaking of other videos, we ended our last video, which was step five, all about editing, with the images fully edited in your Adobe Lightroom catalog. Now, it doesn't do your clients any good if you've done all the retouching in the world, but the files are stuck on your computer and in their raw format, right? So the next thing that it's time for you to do is go ahead and export those photos from Adobe Lightroom into a format that your clients can easily access. So we recommend exporting your files into full-size JPEG format as JPEG is kind of the best compromise of a reasonable file size, but still with good quality. And here's a little pro tip. We actually use a Lightroom plugin called mm -hmm. JPEG Mini Pro, which is a total game changer. They use a proprietary image compression software that connects directly with Lightroom or Photoshop, and it allows you to export photos that are up to 50% smaller without sacrificing quality at all. Honestly, it sounds a little bit like magic to us, but we try not to ask too many questions because it works. We've been using it for years and it's so affordable, it's kind of crazy. It is not an annual subscription or a monthly subscription. It is a one-time fee of less than $100. And if that wasn't good enough, you can also use the code HSP20 to get another 20% off courtesy of us and the JPEG Mini Pro team. So the link to this plugin is in the description below as well as that discount code. Yeah, and this is gonna save you storage on your computer, clutch, on your client's computers, more clutch and one and on whatever gallery service you use to host your images which is the most clutch of all mm -hmm. so because most gallery services are going to charge you based on the amount of storage you take up this means that you can deliver almost twice as many photos to clients before having to upgrade your storage with whoever you use for your gallery delivery. And honestly, one of the best parts of JPEG Mini Pro is just how easy it is to use. So once you purchase a license, install it on your computer, and then integrate it with Lightroom, which is a very, you know, not a very complicated process, and they show you exactly how to do it. Once you do that, you really don't ever have to touch it again. You just export your photos as you would have before, and it runs itself every time you export, automatically cutting your file size by 20 or 30 or even 50%. So now that you've got a few hundred or a few thousand uh, JPEG files on your computer, what's the best way to get them to your client? The days of you know burning CDs or using USB flash drives are just, they're over. And honestly, we've been doing photography long enough that we were around during those days. <laughs> Uh, in a world of instantaneous results, an online delivery system is what most clients are expecting. We know that we certainly wanted an online gallery when we were shopping for our wedding photographer, and whenever we can, we treat our clients the way we wanted to be treated during that process. So there are a ton of gallery services out there. You've probably heard the name of you know three or five of them already, but Sarah and I use and have used for years a gallery service called Pixie Set, and honestly, we love it. We did a ton of research, um, this was probably four or five years ago, kind of comparing all the options. And when it comes to a gallery delivery service, we found that Pixie Set just made the most sense for our business. Yeah, their galleries are beautiful for our clients and it's just really easy to use for both us and for our clients. Mm -hmm. We can also sell prints directly through our online gallery with just a few clicks of a button and Pixie, does, Pixie Set does 100% of that work. But we're gonna do a video just on print sales later on, so make sure you subscribe and kind of check that out. Yeah, but, but we send the gallery to our clients, um, and if they choose to purchase prints, Pixie Set literally just sends us our profit and does the rest every single time we make a sale. 
So if you do want to sign up for Pixie Set and you're not already using it, you can use the link in the description to sign up using our link. Now we don't get any sort of kickback. We really honestly just have a link because we love Pixie Set. And if you use that link, you'll get an extra quarter of a gigabyte for free when you sign up. Even if you just sign up for their free plan, which is three gigabytes of storage. But as you eventually upgrade to more storage, you keep that extra free one quarter of a gigabyte just for using our link basically. So as you can see, this is a much better first impression than opening an email that just shows a Dropbox or Google Drive logo and says, Hunter Sheldon shared photo, Nancy underscore Ryan underscore wedding underscore one, two, zero, five, two, one with you. <laughs> so, and this is honestly one of our favorite parts of Pixie Set, whether you're using it for gallery delivery or building your first website with them, we've been so impressed with both the aesthetics, the really great and easy to use interface, as well as just like super reasonable pricing. And a quick sidebar in an effort to further age ourselves. We actually built our first website in the days before Pixie Set, even offered websites. But nowadays, many of our apprentices and our students will actually use them for their first website. And we're actually really impressed with what you can get with their free plan or even with some of their more, you know, advanced features for like 10 or 20 bucks a month. And another great part about our workflow is that, you know, assuming you're following along and you saw video step number two, the wedding is now broken up into these smaller, more manageable categories that reflect the day itself. So when you do eventually upload the images to Pixie Set, you can just easily allow your clients to relive their wedding day in the same chunks that they experienced it on on their actual wedding day. Yeah, so you should keep this in mind when you create those categories in the first place. In the first place. So yes, they're mostly for internal use, but your client facing gallery can feature these same categories as well. So this is what the back end of Pixie Set actually looks like. Your clients will never really see this side, but as you can see, you as the photographer can easily create, customize, and mix and match whatever categories you'd like. And you can upload photos directly to the individual categories one by one, or just upload them all to one category and then organize them once they're in Pixie Set. So after all of this work that you've done, this is the moment where your couple finally gets their wedding gallery or their family photos or their engagement session. So keep this in mind. Your clients don't know about all the hours and the culling and the editing and everything that went into it. This is like their second, maybe third interaction with their photos at all after their sneak peek and or blog. So this is a huge moment and their first impression when they open the full gallery will definitely influence how they feel about the rest of their photos. That's why using a beautiful gallery service like Pixie Set, as opposed to just sending them a Google Drive or a Dropbox link can make a big difference when it comes to presentation. Now, whether we're talking about weddings, portrait sessions, it doesn't matter. Opening just some standard file sharing link and then viewing a list of file names feels really corporate and cold and disconnected. And they, you know, some of your clients might open galleries like that all the time time at work or folders like that at work all the time and just makes the whole experience feel way less fun. Whereas we think that opening a wedding gallery or an engagement session gallery or a gallery full of family photos should feel more like attending a party in their honor. Yeah. Another thing that can also help with presentation is actually just putting the best images from the wedding day or from the session up front to help them get excited for the gallery right when they open it. Since we already selected about 30 of our favorite images from across the wedding day for their blog, this is an easy extra step. We have a Hunter and Sarah's favorite section that our couple will see as soon as they open their gallery. And this is just another way to put our best foot forward when it comes to our couple's first impression of their images. So when you should deliver your client's final galleries is a question we get pretty often. And honestly, when you deliver them is probably just as important as how you deliver them. Yeah, so while it's obviously possible to take too long to deliver and make your clients mad. Just like with the blog and the sneak peek, we also believe that it's possible to deliver too early. So one of our apprentices once told us a story about the first wedding day that she ever shot as a lead shooter. She was so excited when she got home that she felt like she wasn't gonna be able to sleep. So she stayed up all night, called and edited the entire wedding and delivered it at like six o'clock in the morning, the day after the wedding. So probably before their couple had even woken up from the day after their wedding. Yeah, so well, you know, we praised her hustle, we also told her that this wasn't a very good long-term strategy. You know, for starters, sleep and self-care are important. Yeah, preach. But we also told her that she could have maximized her client's experience if she had given them a little time to come down from the wedding high and then delivered the full gallery a week or two 
or more later. Now, this is obviously an extreme example, but if she had taken, you know, just a couple of days, like we talked about in step four, and then presented something like a sneak peek or a blog, it would have really kind of built that anticipation. So then when the final gallery came, even just two or three weeks later, which is still on the very early time, you know, on the early side for turnaround, it would have felt more like a grand finale and less like, oh my gosh, what the heck? We have our wedding photos already? Yeah, it's kind of like, can you imagine if you went to a fireworks show and they put the best, biggest finale part of the show at the beginning of it? Or if you, there are any like superhero movie fans like me, like imagine if you went to this long anticipated, you know, showing and it's midnight and you go and you're seeing the biggest, baddest superhero movie and like 10 minutes into the movie is the climactic finale fight scene. And then it was just hours after that, right? It would feel really weird to have it all kind of front loaded so much. You want to build that anticipation. Yeah. So believe it or not, there's still one more step <laughs> in our workflow once a wedding is delivered to our clients. So we want to make sure that our internal systems are as organized and efficient and not just the ones that the clients see. So for starters, we're going to right click on the folder in Lightroom in our Lightroom primary catalog and mark it as green to remind us that it's finished. So this helps us at a quick glance know how far along we are in all of the active projects we have, right? So for us, red means it's backed up, but we haven't really started working on it. Yellow means it's been called, but we haven't done any editing. Blue means it's been blogged and, and that blog has been sent to our clients. And then green means it has been completely edited, exported and delivered. Green is totally done. Yeah. So once a wedding is delivered, we also clean up some of our backup systems to make room for future jobs. If you remember, you know, way back to step one, we said we're a bit obsessive about backups. So before a wedding is delivered to a couple, it will exist in four or five places. However, that's overkill for jobs once they've been completed, since the clients now have a copy of all their images. So once a job is delivered, we're gonna move it from the internal hard drive on our main computer to an external hard drive that has way more storage, but is much slower since we're not going to access them very often once they've been delivered. And this is where all of our completed jobs live basically forever. Um, we're also gonna remove the images from our memory card so that we have more room for future jobs. And we're also, when it comes to our cloud storage like Dropbox, we're gonna leave them on there pretty much for as long as we can. But once we start to run out of storage, which is usually for us, you know, maybe six months after the wedding day, we're just gonna start deleting all the oldest stuff. So it'll maybe exist on Dropbox and the external hard drive for six-ish months. And then from then on, once we delete it from Dropbox, the images, the raw files will just exist on our external hard drive basically forever. So this is an example of how our Lightroom primary catalog may look at any given time. Most jobs are green and stored on an external hard drive since they've been completed. Meanwhile, all of the current jobs marked red for backed up but not yet called or yellow for called but not yet blogged are stored on the computer's internal hard drive. If we, for example, finish the blog for Catherine and Brendan, we'd change it to blue like this. Okay, so we lied. Celebrating is actually the final step. Editing a wedding is a huge project, and for many photographers, one that'll only happen a few times a year or maybe a few times a month at absolute max. So make sure you take the t a moment to celebrate in whatever way makes sense to you. Maybe you go out to dinner with some friends or with your partner to celebrate a, a completed job, or maybe you just allow yourself some time off to rest. Maybe you set aside 50 or 100 bucks for each completed job, specifically to buy something special for yourself as a reward for all of your hard work. But no matter how you choose to celebrate, we really hope that this entire blog series has helped you think about your own post-production workflow and really get the most out of your time in Lightroom so that you can spend less time on your computer and more time either out shooting and building your business or spending time with the people you love. But that's it for the series. So one quick announcement here at the end of this video. Um, since Sarah and I are in the middle of our kind of peak busy spring wedding season, and we're also gonna be spending most of the month of June off, for some personal travel. We're gonna be posting videos every other week for the next like six weeks or so. Um, so our next video is actually gonna be two weeks from today on the 26th of May. But don't worry, we're gonna be back to posting weekly content later this summer. Yeah, but also if you haven't already, we would really encourage you to join our Facebook community, Mastering the Wedding Photography Biz with Hunter and Sarah. In that group, you know, we're building a free community of other photographers who are also building their photography businesses and helping each other out along the way. Especially while we're kind of in and out over these next six weeks or so. But um, finally, if you found this video helpful or if you have questions, you'd like to add anything, or you just wanna say thanks, please feel free to comment below. But thanks guys, see you soon. See you in a couple weeks.